Hey. hey, good morning, good morning. Oh, <laughs> uh, what a morning. Welcome to the top of the tower. Here we are, an actual Ghostbuster. I'm thrilled. I'm on my knees, Vass. Yeah. I'm yeah, on fact, my I'm, knees. I'm joining you. Also on my knees, Ernie. Yeah. Ernie, uh, how's it been this time around? Well, uh, you know, with you on your knees, I, this is kind of special this time around. Uh, no, it's been uh, it's a wonderful time, and I'm very excited and happy. Okay, so when was the first time you ever heard the phrase Ghostbusters? First time I ever heard Ghostbusters, I was on an elevator with Ivan Reitman, the uh, producer um, of the of all the films, and he directed the first two. I was on an elevator. I did a movie a year before called Space Hunter with Peter Strauss and Molly Ringwald. Um, and he produced that movie. Right. But I was on an elevator, and uh, it was a long ride down, and he said, I'm doing this movie called Ghostbusters, but there's nothing in it for you. And that was how he started out. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. And then uh, later on I found out that there was a part that he thought I was all wrong for. But uh, eventually um, I got the audition and won the part. Right. I've never heard you tell that story before. There's so much there. And this is the whole interview yeah. just there. So I was going to say, I was going to say um, stupidly and not very wittily and quite predictably, oh, so it was the ultimate elevator pitch. It was, yeah. But it wasn't, though, was it? It was the non-pitch pitch. It was a non-pitch. So don't even ask, you know. And he said, oh, it's with uh, Billy and Danny. I had to know who that was. And I'm like, well, okay, well, good luck with that. And Do you think he was sort of stringing you along? Do you think he was planting a seed there? Do you think that was just really clever negotiation? Ivan wasn't the kind of guy who was stringing you along. No, he, he kind of meant it. But, but the character <laughs> I played in Space Hunter was bigger than life. My right. head was shaved. It was in a lower voice. Okay. And he was kind of dominating. Um, it was on a, another planet. It was one of those space things. And the character Winston in Ghostbusters is just the opposite. He's a guy who sort of works with the team. Yeah. And I, I don't think he was able to separate the two. I'm an actor, so that was a role. And um, So who flicked the switch then? Who made the call, do you think? Uh, eventually, after they saw everyone I knew in town, <laughs> I mean, everybody, um, then they thought, well, maybe let's let Ernie come in. That's and so uh, funny. I read the script and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm getting this role. That's so funny. What a great story. So yeah. so when you walked in, was Ivan there? Uh, yeah, he was there. And you went, and, ha, ha. Uh, yeah, he was there and they were very skeptical sitting back, you know, let's see what yeah. you got. And, uh, and I did the thing that actors do. Sometimes you go in and when it all comes together and I just nailed it, I knew I, I just. What I did wanted... you do? What was the audition like? It was uh, uh, reading, um, you know, just reading different scenes with um, Harold Ramis was in the room, but uh, I was so good. You know, when you when you just know I'm good, you're in the slot. You know what I mean? I wanted to take the script and throw it on the floor, like uh, like take a mic that. drop. Yeah, like a you know. And then I went home. I expected I'm going to get the call any minute, and then um, and then I didn't get the call any minute. So <laughs> <laughs> it took about five auditions. Uh, I was three screen tests. Um, it was almost like they felt I was right for the part, but they were really hoping they could find somebody else, anybody else but Ernie. And then finally, um, uh, I won the part. So. Right. So this is, is it, is it a, a 40th celebration, this film? Was it always, is that what it is? Or it just happens to come out 40 years on from the first one? Or how, how, is it, how does it feel? Has it been framed? What's the flavor of the, of the press tour? Uh, what, what is everybody feeling? Yeah, the feeling is very different. I mean, we, uh, it's almost like stepping back into a postcard. We did this. It came out in 84. Um, but what's the difference is the fans have embraced this movie in a way like no other movie I've ever done. I mean, they even when there was no Ghostbusters out, people were still... Ghostbusting. Ghostbusting, <laughs> building their backpacks, turning their cars and ectomobiles. Um, it's just... Uh, it's ast astonishing to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big classic car fan. We have a festival called Car Fest for charity and it raises all this money. And there's always a Ghostbuster car there. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're around, the ambulances. Yeah. There's a very famous collection in Los Angeles, um, the, Pierce, the Peterson collection. Yes, yes. And there's one down in the basement there as yeah, well. Have you been yeah. there? I have been there, yeah. No, I've seen, uh, I've seen, and then, and yet, people who can't afford the Cadillac, I've seen Volkswagen Ectomobiles. I mean, they've, you know, all kinds of. They take the lights and they they turn it into yeah. their. Yeah, and it's and, a cool car. I mean, you know, I, my I think my favorite sort of um, uh, memorabilia car would be the Starsky and Hutch car. Yeah, um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, but this is pretty close, and it's the opposite, I suppose, because because the Starsky and Hutch car has a, a red car with a white stripe. This is a white ambulance with the red stripe, isn't it, right. on the yeah. side? Yeah. Um, 
Is there an original one? <laughs> have there been many? Do you have one at home? Or? <laughs> no, I thought about buying one, but I'm went, no. Uh, I was in Arizona and went to dinner with some people, and the wife, when the husband went to the restroom, said, please talk to him because he took our car and he, he bought a Cadillac and turned it into an Ectomobile, and it's the only car we have. And when I go to the store, people want to take pictures and the kids, and it's like, so people... <laughs> People love the car, and uh, but I've never only one have I ever seen that actually runs well because it's that yeah, Cadillac they, model. They rarely is do. Awful. They rarely do. All right. So, um, so Ghostbusters uh, filmed in eighty one, eighty two ish originally. Uh, yeah, we filmed it in eighty three. Eighty three came out okay. in eighty four. Eighty four. All right. Yeah, and the um, second one eighty eighty came out in eighty whatever five years later you know, 89 was, I, I think now we're in there's lots of golden ages aren't there you know you can always harp on about our you know your generation's golden age but the 80s were special they're for movies so. they were so special yeah because they made these movies you know you, you could reel them all off that were funny but they weren't comedies yes you know like yeah. your Beverly Hills Cop and your 48 Hours yes. your Pretty Woman and Romance in the Stone and, right. and Ferris Bueller's Day Off all those I mean just talking about them gives me hairs and the you know, goosebumps. Yes. And what was it about the eighties? What was what was going on? You know, what was in the water then? I think we were really trying to make movies that would last. I mean, we thought of movies as um, works of art. I mean, we wanted, we really wanted to connect with the fans. Now I think it's such a demand for content yeah. that they just throw some people together and get a story and yeah. just turning it out. But it doesn't have the heart. It doesn't heart, have the filmmaker the heart, wanting to bring something special that'll last. Yeah. And I don't think they worry about it lasting. They just move on to the next thing. Yeah, and what's interesting about the the um, those kind of movies, the 80s movies, late 70s as well, uh, is that they seem frothy and frivolous, and they they sort of take you by surprise with the heart. Yes. The heart yeah. comes in, and you suddenly, you, you know, 45 minutes into this movie on a Saturday afternoon, you're in love with these people, <laughs> and you're really sort of cheering for them. Yeah. So you know, yeah. And as, as silly as Ghostbusters is, you even feel like that about Ghostbusters. I think so too. I think it's why it's lasted. Um, the humanity is 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 there. The story, camaraderie. You know, we get yeah, we get to to know the people, and I think people connect to it in a way that makes it personal, and they relate it to their lives. Um, you know, so I, I I love the '80s movies, and um, and Ghostbusters is really about a team of guys trying to come together to yeah. defeat this threat to the world. You are a Ghostbuster. It's like having a Beetle, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it, it, it is, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a cinematic equivalent of having the, a, a Beetle, which we've had, thank God. Uh, but we've got a Ghostbuster. We're so excited, man. We're so excited. And uh, for this movie, you are back in New York, which is very important, yes, isn't yes. it? Yeah, New York is, I think, the um, the center, you know, the the throb of, you know, the Ghostbuster epicenter. So we're back. Uh, the last movie sort of reacquainted us with Ghostbusters. But this movie is really uh, Ghostbusters in action. It's yeah. a really exciting movie. I think I'm, I feel very, very good yeah, about it. Yeah, it's out today. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in cinemas today. Everyone's talking about it. I watched loads of your interviews in America as well, mm. just to get ready for the interview, because it got me so excited about meeting <laughs> you. And, and um, you're on Jimmy Fallon, and you tell this, what's the great story? <laughs> it's a lovely story um, uh, about... This late, what happens to you when you're famous? When you're a Ghostbuster, sometimes somebody comes up to you in the street and asks you to walk them down the aisle that day, <laughs> and then because of because of their obvious allegiance, because of something they have on their body to the Ghostbusters franchise, you end up saying yes. Yeah, yeah, no. She she came in and said, "We're getting married this afternoon. Will you give me away?" Mm. And I'm like, "That's quite an honor, but I don't know you." Yeah. And she said, "You do know me. You signed my ankle." And I said, "What?" <laughs> and she, I apparently at some convention signed my name on her ankle. Yeah. And she had it permanently tattooed. Yeah. And if someone has your name tattooed on them, how do you not get away? Married. Margot Kidder was uh, at that same convention, and we both. I participated in the wedding. I told that story on TV last week, yeah. and I, I this lady reached out to me saying um, she's the one, and uh, they're still married. She was happily married, and uh, so things good things work out. And how are the conventions? Because if people don't know, excuse me, there are comic cons. And there's a big one here this weekend, a big Doctor Who one. Ah. And um, what they, for people who've never been to these things, they are phenomenal, aren't they? They're phenomenal. You know, I've I've gone to ones where there are thousands and thousands of people. I only heard of one incident of, of any kind of violence. You know what I mean? Only one, and there was nothing really major. But people who love the movies, who show up. They and dress up. Dress up and meet each other, and it's just a, just a wonderful yeah. 
community of people. And it freaks some people out, about, but it's it's harmless fun. And I think it's cool. A friend of mine who's a butcher is a big Comic Con yeah. fan, yeah. and he'll go to Doctor Who or just Doctor Who or Star Wars. I haven't talked about Ghostbusters because I didn't yeah. see him this week, but he loves it. And he's a lovely bloke, you know. Yeah. And why the heck not? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. They travel from all over the world. They um, and it's meet meeting people of like mind, and and it's it's positive, which I. What I love about it, anything we can share together and have a good time, yeah. uh, it's wonderful. I'm with you all the way, all the way. When did you get the call this time around for this movie? Uh, we did, um, the. F- it had been a period of time between the Ghostbusters and um, um, the the last movie um, we did. Uh, they came out, um, and I'm going blank on the name, that's what happened in my age, suddenly I don't you know, remember. But... <laughs> but um, <laughs> Uh, the last movie got a call, and we hadn't been together for a long time. And uh, when I got on the set, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd in the jumpsuits, it was almost emotional um, that it, because it had been so long. But this this uh, movie that's coming out now, Frozen Empire, uh, I was really impressed with the new cast. So, I mean, so it was it a couple of years ago, four or five years ago? Uh, yeah, it's. I, I keep. Did you ever saying. think it would happen? Again. Um, I'd kind of given up, you know, uh, I knew the fans wanted it. I know the fans have been really supportive. Um, but, um, I had kind of thought, well, maybe it'll, it won't happen and that's okay. Well, it you has know? happened. And it, it has it, uh, yeah, but the fans did not waver. They, yeah, they yeah. stayed committed. I mean, so, you know, we are, we know how important opening weekends are to movies, you know, they can kill a film. Um, but because you have such a fan base, you know, you have a sort of head start on most opening weekends. So why wouldn't you do it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. And I, I think it's, you know, sometimes um, they they pick up these titles and you know it's something the studio wants because yeah. they want to make money. And so they got a title and they'll throw it out there. But this is something the fans have sort of demanded. Yeah, yeah. And you want to be a part of that because, and you want to make a movie that you don't disappoint them. Yeah. I mean, it's very important to me. And I think everybody in the movie we really wanted it to be something that the fans would embrace and I, th- I think it does that yeah well Tilly went to see it yesterday and she's given us chapter and verse on it and she says it's really moved with the times which of course it had to because now with yes. the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe you know audience expectations even as, as loyal as fans as they would be sure. they you've still got to deliver yes. and apparently it really delivers and it's it's Probably scary in parts. <laughs> yeah, I think it, uh, it it it's a Ghostbuster movie, and I think it uh, it 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 does deliver. And uh, like I said, I, I really feel very very good. But and it's also you know this is forty years later. We're not uh, playing to the same audience yeah, yeah. that we played to. The uh-huh. world has changed in so many You're ways. You're the Rolling so, Stones, man. You know, it's like it's, <laughs> and uh, so we you know you have to except embrace a change yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but still happy to be uh, still rocking it okay so the thrust of it is there is a Dr. Evil character and he free he wants to freeze everything and uh, your character has been away um, sort of in the laboratory figuring new ways of of, of, of ghost busting because this time around it's in the trailer I'm allowed to say this right. I, I must be um, it's all the ghosts isn't it um, all the ghosts you're, you're, you're having all the ghosts that you've ever well, busted yeah, in the past. They're they coming up, back yeah, to find you. Well, they're yeah. We, we have some issues, revenge. but there's one dominant ghost that is so formidable that uh, it, it almost seems impossible to defeat. Over the past forty years, my character, yeah. who came in looking for a job, is now gone on to become a billionaire. He uh, runs a Zetamore uh, Industries, but part of what he does is manage this little Ghostbuster thing that costs him money. But uh, but he sort of funds this and and puts this new team together, and uh, to kind of hand things over. Yeah, yeah. But this new threat is so ominous and so threatening that we have to. The only way we can defeat it is to come together. Come on! And it's not so much passing the baton. It's it's you know it's passing all the tools on, isn't it? Oh yeah. And there's a new family, and there's there's the there's a there's a family, and there's the kids in the family. There's maybe two potential future generations. Yeah. Around the, the uh, yeah the the last movie Afterlife, which I just thought of the name <laughs> Afterlife. Uh, <laughs> it's um, uh, Egon Spangler, yeah. who was Harold Ramis played. In yeah, the yeah. It's his family who really the daughter didn't know her father very well and so they sort of discover the Ghostbusters and what he did in that last movie now my loyalty to him and the other Ghostbusters who gave me a job when I most needed it uh, I found this family and I brought them to New York and because I expect they will take over the franchise and move things into the future which they're quite capable until this this new threat and it's going to take 
everybody. Oh my gosh, Tilly came and she threw, she gave it a ten. Yeah. She gave it a ten. She doesn't give. She doesn't give out many tens. No, she she's a full on ten. Yeah, it's, uh, and you know, I think uh, all the fans I've, who've seen the movie, uh, they're so excited about it. Now, reviewers, we'll see what they have to say because they don't always appreciate the Ghostbuster kind of movies. But uh, but I, I promise, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters, even if you haven't seen the movie, you'll like this movie. Yeah, yeah. By the way, we've we've been lucky enough over the years to have some pretty big hitters sitting in chairs opposite us on this show right but we've never ever 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 had an actor <laughs> with a filmography that comes close to yours this is well, i mean ernie this is unbelievable so this is just a list of the you've films been, you've been, been in, in so many films. since, since lead belly in 1976 i mean if I, if I started reading them out we'd be we'd be well into ryan's show he comes on air at 10 a.m in more than an hour and a half but here here's the thing here's the thing ernie hudson what do you th- i mean more than one film most years you've had come out yeah. but what do you think links the years 1994 2012 and 2016 in your career oh wow I, geez i don't know in those three years in those i mean most years two right. films three films four films in right. those three years you personally <laughs> starred in six films that's just rude wow, man. that's just rude <laughs> well because you never had an actor on your show who needed a job as much as i did <laughs> I got to work. Uh, I got kids, so uh, you know. Yeah, how many? Jeez. Uh, I mean, you've been in all the films, man. This is so impressive. Um, in 1964, you were how old? In 64, I was 18. 18. 18. So people say, you know, that this is a great question. If you could go back at any point in time, where would you go? And I was born in 66. So I was born, in, I can sort of remember hearing the radio in 68, 69 with a Beatles song, Obla right. Obla Dark, sort of, which was a marmalade song, but Beatles did it. Yeah. I can sort I think, maybe I've just wished it. I think I can remember being alive in the 60s, but I wouldn't go back to, um, you know, the resurrection or the fall or the rise of the Roman Empire. I would go, I would just go back a couple of years before I was born i'd want to be an 18 year old in 1964 what was it like it was it was a great time you know 64 for me um was getting out of high school uh my sons were born in the 60s um you're right about my son's age and uh it was just you know, the world was was i think the you know the dawning of the age of aquarius and yeah people were expecting this new future and out with the old and now we're going to bring in a, a you know the love and and here we are you know yeah. i mean somehow the hope and the optimism was so high and and uh, we, we were well intentioned yeah my generation yeah. no well intentioned. i mean 62 63 64 i mean 67 and vietnam and all that it started yeah. to go very pear-shaped war right. on drugs nixon blah yeah, blah blah you know, and civil rights i mean yeah. that changed i mean the world how we see ourselves it was it was a time of of just optimism and change and hope um, and yet, you know, so much was going on, the assassinations. Yeah, yeah, and, totally. You know, yeah, to- 100%. A- and then you had space travel and, all this yes, and then you had yeah. the, the atomic bomb and all this kind of stuff. And um, wh- what was the most 60s thing you did in the 60s? Oh, geez. That you can, that you can talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most 60s thing. you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, um, you know, the, for me, the most 60s things was, because it was optimism, I, I got out of high school not sure what, what I would do? ever do. I, I, did, I, you know, I realized that I'd screwed up high school. I didn't study very hard. Yeah, yeah. And I had no hope for any kind of future. Yeah. And uh, I somehow found theater. Uh, How did you in, do that? And, Come on, uh, tell us about I that. I found theater in 66. I just, Where? just by accident, I went to see... Uh, I, I had an argument with, with my wife, yeah. and I was driving around because I didn't want to go home, mm. and I saw these people lined up in front of this building, and yeah. it was kind of weird, and so I parked the car and asked what was going on, you and they were going to see sure. a play. I'd never seen a play, and I thought, as opposed to going home, I'm, I got in line, yeah. I sat in that theater, the curtain came up, and it was I think it was called Papa's Daughter, and it was about a father, this, right? and the Where? daughter had, had got pregnant, the father disowned her, and in the end, they came together, and I found when the lights went up, I was bawling in tears. You were healed as I well. I was just, oh my God, that Did was so amazing. Did you go back and make up? You know, yeah, yeah, well, I made up, but I realized it took a lot more for that marriage than, than just seeing a play. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I always think, save the drama for the stage. That's right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you that don't... was when I discovered theater, and... The world opened up. I was I got involved Where in was theater. That theater. It was it was in Detroit. It was in uh, it was in Detroit, 
Is and, it still around? Um, is it still, still standing? Um, yeah, it actually it, it is. The Detroit Repertory Theater, the founder just passed recently. But uh, I worked a lot there. I worked over, I just, once I, I just became immersed in theater. And your first and, big break? Uh, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm waiting for We're it. We're getting loads of texts and emails. <laughs> That's and right, yes. Little, what about this? Um, OMG, loving the show. And Ernie, such a big fan. He's awesome. Glennon Donington, Karen Swindon. Have you seen Grace and Frankie? Hysterically funny series with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Ernie was adorable as Jacob. I love that show. I love uh, Lily Tomlin, who played my girlfriend. It's just, they're just... They're just Amazing Lily people. Tomlin and Jane Fonda. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to work today. I'm going to see Jane and Lily again. <laughs> what are they, how long did that last for? Uh, I was on the show maybe uh, three years. You all, know? all the fun? All the um, fun? All, all out of fun, you know. <laughs> but Lily's the, the one, um, you know, I won't say age, but Lily's the one actress that I had so much fun playing my girlfriend that my wife loved. Normally when I do these scenes where I have, you know, Careful my wife is like, Careful you, there, my, yeah, my wife is kind of watching, you know. But with Lily, it was like, oh, tell Lily hello. She, she loved Tell loved Lily, Lily I love her. <laughs> um, there's a story today about Chester Zoo, right? Chester's a place in the northwest of England, in Manchester, uh, not Manchester, it's the half of England. Um, and... Um, it's about snow leopards. So ah. for the first time, Chester Zoo today has a, a pair of snow leopards, which wow. is cool. Yeah. As long as they've been treated right, it's cool. But the point of the story is the head of Chester Zoo is called Michael Jordan. Ah. Now, you've worked with actual Michael Jordan, not our Michael Jordan, but another Michael Jordan. I did a, yeah, I did a sto story based on his life. I played his dad and uh, when Debbie Allen played uh, the mother and uh robin givens played his wife but uh yeah it was um, a few years back but um and and got to meet him didn't really get to know him very well but um it was fun uh you have a, also um basketballed yourself on screen against leonardo dicaprio yeah basketball diaries which yeah. was a you really were, interesting you're a very good basketball player on film <laughs> on film on film yeah they tell gave us me about this, that now well they gave me the part because yeah. uh, i'm a six foot black man yeah. who um I think they assumed I played basketball. Yep. I am not into sports. I, I don't know anything. <laughs> and so when we got into rehearsal, Leonardo was just playing circles around me, and I I couldn't keep up with him. But, uh, of course, the the movie had me as an ex-basketball player. I did get Chet Walker, Wilt Chamberlain, a bunch of ex-NBA uh, players. Uh, they uh, got together with me and tried to give me some quick pointers, which weren't quick enough. But um, uh, but I love that movie. That's a That's a... Well, one of the movies I really enjoyed making the most. You have had so much fun. What a what a lovely life. I'm sure you're very grateful for your career, aren't you? I'm so thankful. You seem I, like a really grateful person. You know, I, I just uh, I give thanks every day. I mean, I uh, my grandmother would say just just live a good life and be an example of what what is possible. Good for you, mate. Um, what happens now, Ghostbuster wise? Is it, is it is it a world tour? Is it is it out this, on the same day or across the world? I know it's out here today. Yeah, no, it's all over the world. Uh, I think a couple of countries. I think France. It's a few weeks before it opens. A couple of countries, but uh, it's out now. People can enjoy it, and now we'll see what uh, how the public feels about it. But if you like Ghostbusters. Um, definitely, I think, go see this movie. You'll yeah. enjoy it. All right. Mark says here, when see Ghostbusters 1984, can't wait to go and see the new one 40 years later. Who would have thought, Mark? Absolutely. Nat says, we're who loving the fact that Ernie's on the show. Ghostbusters is my favourite film ever. I remember our whole school travelled on buses from Market Harbour to Leicester to watch Ghostbusters as a school trip. Best school day ever. <sighs> Boom. <laughs> Ernie, you have not disappointed. It's great to see you, man. Oh, it's so nice to see you. It's I'm really enjoying spending this time with you guys. And, uh, yeah, man, just love your energy. You just uh, really, <laughs> I, I feel your spirit, man. We're having a go, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> We're having a go. We're having a go. It's our job to sing and to play and to share the show every day. That's what we do. Um, Ernie, anything else you'd like to say to the world? Because this will all be on YouTube, around the world. Yeah. What do you um, want to say? No, just, um, you know, let's... Uh, what, a, what a, uh, you know, all we need is love. Let's just come together and uh, enjoy this life. It's not forever. Yeah. When you get to be my age, uh, you realize this is short times and it's not enough time to be fighting. Let's come together. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. And um, it's funny, isn't it? Because when we're challenged by things um, and as difficult as they are, as w the, worst, the worst case scenario for me in anything 
is no matter what's happening. If it if something is happening to you and it might be terrible, at least it confirms that you're alive to Absolutely. experience it. Absolutely. That's the thing, isn't yes, it? That's the thing. And don't expect it to be easy. It's meant to have challenges. That's the fun of it. That's the living part of that's it. The, that's the that's why it's that's why we're here. Yeah. All life is suffering. There is an what is it? All life is suffering. All suffering is desire. There is an end to suffering and there is a noble path to that end of suffering. And that's called getting up every day, starting being grateful, getting to the end of the day, trying to make everything that happens in front of you better because you were part of it. There yes, you go. absolutely. Great to meet you, Ernie. So nice to meet you. How cool is he? Yeah, very. Cool. Control room and applause for the great Ernie Hudson! Yay! Yay! <laughs> yes! yes. We did it! We did it! We had a Ghostbuster on the show! Come on! Yeah! <laughs> Great.